After two MVPs and 105 triple-doubles, Nikola Jokic has redefined how we're supposed to look at big men in the NBA. Media members and fans alike have gushed at his effortless skill and his mind-boggling stats, but what about fellow NBA players? Here's what some of Jokic's competitors think about the Denver Nuggets big man. DeAndre Ayton was the number one pick of the 2018 draft, a really impressive place in a draft that also included the likes of Trey Young and Luka Doncic. While Ayton and Jokic play the same position, that's where the similarities end. Ayton is a physical force who relies on athleticism and knowledge of his strength and speed to succeed, while Jokic thrives despite his physical disadvantages. In the 2021 Western Conference second round, Jokic was seeking his second straight conference finals appearance while the Suns were chasing a title with a new leader, Chris Paul, at point guard. After a game, a reporter asked Ayton about the matchup against Jokic, who said that Ayton was tough to guard. Wow, who said that? I love playing against Jokic, man. That's that's the MVP of our league. He, ha he has so much, man. He has, he has a lot to cover. Dude can do anything. So that's just the modern center right there. You know, he drives, he can shoot, he can do everything. He can play make for his teammates. So one day he could be that dude on film, and you know, one day he won't be that dude on film when you're watching everything he does. So. While Dirk Nowitzki was a unicorn of his own right, even he's baffled by what Jokic can do. Dirk was a seven-footer who doubled as one of the league's premier three-point threats, firmly holding the lead for most three-pointers by a seven-footer with 1,982. He's also the only big man to be in the 50-40-90 club, doing so in his 2007 MVP season. During the 2020 NBA playoffs, NBA writer Zach Lowe said that while many people compare Jokic to Mark Gasol because of his passing chops, Dirk is the better comp. Lowe texted Dirk that comparison and published his response on ESPN. Damn, Dirk said, that's a compliment. I wish I had his skill set. His passing is so good, it's a joke. I, unfortunately, always wanted to score and not pass. Dirk brought his Mavericks a title in the 2011 upset over the Wade LeBron Heat, so Mavs fans are probably okay with the balance he struck. But the comparison is pretty fair. Dirk was a crunch time scorer who could get to the hoop with ease, finish in traffic, or step back for a three-pointer. Jokic played the same role for the Nuggets in that playoff run. While he's their floor general for most of the game, when things get tight, Denver always turns to Jokic. After being traded away from the Brooklyn Nets to the Phoenix Suns, Kevin Durant is officially part of the Western Conference Finals race. He and Jokic are now in each other's way on their quest to bring their respective franchise their first title. The Suns have the best odds to win the Western Finals, according to FanDuel, sitting at plus 200. The Nuggets, meanwhile, currently hold the number one seed in the West, meaning all teams must go through them. KD is constantly on Twitter, sometimes protecting his own name and sometimes hyping up fellow players across the league. It's clear that on top of being an NBA superstar, he's a huge fan of the game and always watching League Pass on his off nights. In March of last year, KD sent a very simple tweet that represented what all Jokic fans constantly feel. That was on March 14th, the same day Jokic's Nuggets played against Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. Both of the last two years, and probably again this year, Jokic and Embiid were the top two vote-getters for MVP. At least that night, Jokic's win proved why he deserved that award. Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors, a premier superstar point guard in his own right, probably the best shooter to ever play in the NBA, says he's got the full package. LeBron's been in the league for 20 years, dominating the sport for two decades. He's been in the league so long, he's played against nine different father-son duos. He's seen a lot of great players in his time, and he's always open to commending them when he should. When LeBron was on his path to bring another title to the storied Los Angeles Lakers franchise in the 2020 bubble, Jokic and the Denver Nuggets were the last Western Conference team in his way. They met in the Western Conference Finals, the farthest Jokic has ever gotten in the NBA playoffs. The Lakers dominated the series 4-1, with LeBron nearly averaging a 27-point triple-double. They went on to win the title. Despite losing the series, Jokic still put up respectable stats and clearly made an impact on his opponent. A few months later, LeBron was asked about Jokic in a post-game presser. LeBron joked about how Joker's athleticism rivaled his own, before actually complimenting the immense passing skills that separate Jokic from other centers. When you have a talent, 
it's endless of what you can do. And, and the guy has an unbelievable talent of seeing the floor and seeing plays happen before they happen. You know, uh, you can look back at Arvita Sabonis and the things that he was doing, you know, with his passing ability. And it was so like out of this world because you hadn't seen a big fella like that seven foot guy passing the ball like he was doing for the Portland Trailblazers. Um, you'd never seen that. Sabonis didn't come into the NBA until he was 31, but he'd already made huge waves in international play. He was renowned as one of the greatest passing big men of all time during his time with the Blazers. That said, he averaged a meager 2.1 assists per game in his career. He peaked at 3 per game in 1997-98. That's not to say he wasn't a world-class passer. It was just a different game. But Jokic's stats put Sabonis to shame. He averaged 9.8 assists per game this year, just shy of becoming the third player in NBA history to average a season-long triple-double. One of the gritty players that defined his era, Chauncey Billups wasn't the traditional star in the way we think of them today. He had meager offensive numbers, didn't shoot as much as he would now, and would never be defined as flashy. But his late-game heroics and consistently stout defense turned him into a winner. He led his Detroit Pistons to six straight conference finals appearances from 2003 to 2008, then played in the 2009 conference finals with the Nuggets for good measure. He won finals MVP after bringing a ring home to Detroit in 2004. Like LeBron, whom Chauncey played in the 2007 conference finals, Chauncey compared Jokic's game to Sabonis. He's just a unique player. I like to do these comparisons to the times when I came in the league and we were in the league, younger players. And I loved Arvidas Sabonis. Sabis. And I always wondered, like, I would like to see him in his prime. Mm. I think we're seeing him in his prime through really? Jokic. He said while neither player could jump over a piece of paper, both players were crafty with long range and had elite point guard vision. It's not just his opponents who are in awe of what Jokic has been doing these last few years. His teammates tout his skill as well. For Michael Porter Jr., the most important thing in Jokic's game is his availability. He said that Jokic can always be counted on every night. You know what he's going to bring, and he's so durable. Porter Jr. knows the importance of staying on the court. Obviously, it's impossible to have an impact on your team if you're on the bench. But on top of that, it's hard to stay consistent night in, night out if you're missing several games. Until this year, Jokic has never missed more than nine games in a single season. Even this year, he's played 69 of his team's 82 games, only missing a handful of games while his team had the number one seed locked up. Porter Jr., on the other hand, has struggled to let his talent show because he's missed so many games. After missing the entirety of his rookie season due to a back injury, he missed several games the next two years and almost all of 2022. This season, he's been inconsistent and struggled to find his proper place in the team's offense, shown by his minuscule assist numbers. NBA players know better than anyone what it takes to be special in this league. While fans can sit back and marvel at the incredible highlights and the unreal stats, only players can truly appreciate how impressive Jokic's run has been these last five years. What do you think is the most impressive thing about Joker's game? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching Hooper's Lane.